How to regulate the oil delivery of a Foster type mechanical lubricator. I've just removed this lubricator from my 4.5 inch scale Buddle traction engine. It's been on the engine since the mid 1990s and it works fine but it works too well, it delivers far too much oil. And it's all down to the adjustment of this part. I removed and refitted this lubricator to the engine a while back and at that time I didn't realise what the problem was. I removed the oil feed pipe from the cylinder but I left it connected to this part. I didn't see the point in taking the pipe off altogether at the time. But now I know what the problem is. I could not remove the union nut from the part. It just wouldn't come off, and I didn't want to destroy the part. So instead, I fitted it into the lathe chuck, holding it by the threads, and turned away the front of the union nut, and the sides as well. Then it came off. So that's a union nut removed. But now the problem is that I can't find the spring and the ball that was in the fitting, because when the end of the union nut came off, so did the spring and the ball. And I don't know if anyone out there has ever tried to find a spring in the chip tray of a lathe, which is unfortunately full of spring-shaped pieces of swarf. So after a short time looking, I gave this up as a bad job. How does this lubricator work anyway, you may be thinking? It's a ratchet-type lubricator that doesn't work like most ratchet-type lubricators. The pump stroke of the piston that fits in the end of this fitting inside the lubricator is controlled by the position of this part in the body casting of the lubricator. If you screw the threaded part out, then you get less oil, because by screwing the part out, you're effectively reducing the stroke of the pump. Internally, these lubricators are very strange. They also have a spring that pushes on the end of the piston during the pump stroke. At the moment, I'm aimlessly winding the handle. There's some oil in the lubricator, but none of it is coming out of the fitting and that's because there isn't a ball or spring in there. So all that's happening is the piston that's in this small cylinder on the fitting that I've shown earlier fills up with oil from the tank. The piston then pushes this cylinder full of oil towards the outlet, but then as the piston comes back, it sucks it back in again. This is superheated steam oil, by the way, and as you can see, it's very thick and gloopy. Currently, I'm emptying the lubricator back into a tin clearly marked steam oil. This takes a while because it's so thick. It's not quite so thick when it gets hot, though. No girlfriend jokes or double entendres in this episode. In my hand, I have a ball. This is a stainless steel ball, and here's the ball conveniently sat in the head of a screw on the bench. Next to it is a piece of pipe stuck into the fitting that I've just made. And at the top, that is a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch commercial union nut. First of all, I put the ball into the pump's outlet adjuster, followed by a spring that was just the right size. I found that in my box of springs. And now it's time to see if it works by rotating the handle. Well, there's not much oil showing at the moment. I'll keep turning. Here comes the oil and lots of it. The initial setting was with this fitting screwed all the way in, so now I'm screwing it out quite a long way. Time to test it again. Even by winding out the fitting to reduce its stroke, there's still far too much oil coming out of the delivery pipe. So I unscrewed it a bit further, and this time I locked up the lock nut to keep it still. And that's a bit better, but I still think it's too much. My showman's engine cylinder is three inches in diameter, which is quite big, but it doesn't need this much oil, because the smoke box and the chimney itself and the little bit that fits in the top, are absolutely covered in a mixture of steam oil and soot. And this is not good. It's not too bad on a 4.5-inch scale traction engine, but on a 5-inch gauge locomotive, it soon restricts the flow up the chimney. If you watch this clip from the steam test yesterday, you will see how fast the lubricator moves when the engine's just basically ticking over. If I was driving the engine down the road, which I will be shortly when I get the passenger truck sorted out, the rotational speed of the ratchet shaft will be much faster than you see when I'm turning it by hand. I soon got into a sequence. I undid the lock nut, rotated the fitting outwards one turn, retightened the lock nut and turned the handle. There does come a point though when the adjustment is all over with. This is too far out and as you can see, there's nothing much in the way of oil coming out of the end of the feed. So this is the pump at the very end of the adjustment scale. Time to slacken off the lock nut 
and rotate the adjuster one turn in. And here's the result. Some oil comes out at every turn, but not very much. A further half a turn in and the adjustment was complete. All I need to do now is dismantle the fitting that I made, thoroughly degrease it and silver solder a feed pipe onto there. And on the other end of the feed pipe will be a quarter by 40 threads per inch nut to connect the oil pipe to the cylinder. So to all of you out there who are either over oiling or under oiling, this is how you adjust the oil delivery from a Foster lubricator. In for more, out for less. And that's it. I'd just like to say, as always, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.